This is my favorite foldable smartphone. It's the Honor Magic V2. This, my friends, is a device that I have wanted to get my hands on for months. We now have a new champion. Meet the Honor Magic V2. Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And it's time to take a look at the thinnest and lightest foldable phone that I've ever used, the Honor Magic V2. All new Honor Magic V2. Reimagine ultra slim. Redesign everything. Break the boundary between bar and foldable phones. We explore afar into the universe and deep into the earth. Bringing the world first shield steel hinge with 3D printed titanium shaft. Strong and reliable. Unfolding into an ultra flat surface with ease. Honor Magic V2 marks the start of the millimeter era. As comfortable in your hand as your regular bar phone. To exceed the expectation for battery life, we innovate to design for a higher energy density. Integrating the 5000 milliamp hour Honor Silicone Carbon Dual Battery in the ultra slim Honor Magic V2 making it worry-free for intensive users. Honor Magic V2 pioneers to integrate risk-free dimming display and circadian night display for both the inner and outer screens, bringing bright, vivid vision and comfort of eye care all at once. Powerful performance enhanced by Magic OS. Smooth handwriting even on both screens, doubling your work efficiency. Extraordinary photography, excellent communication, and privacy protection, providing an all-round flagship experience like never before. A revolutionary breakthrough, bringing smartphone to a whole new age. From innovation to evolution. So inside the box of the Honor Magic V2, you get the device, there is an included Honor 66 watt supercharger, a USB cable, a SIM card tool, some paperwork, as well as an included case. And here it is. So I've got two of the color versions here, a purple and a black, but there are other color versions available. And I think the first thing you notice straight away is just how thin and light this device is. It weighs just 231 grams, which is lighter than some standard flagship devices out there. And when it's folded, there is no gap and it's just around 9.9 millimeters thin. Now, despite this, Honor have done some magic and managed to fit in a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is larger than most of the foldables out there, which are a lot thicker as well. And when the device is closed, we have a cover display, which is 6.43 inches with small bezels. It's an OLED display with a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So when you're using this on your day to day, there isn't really a compromise. It's not narrow and the device isn't thick. It feels like a regular smartphone. And I think that is what the aim of a foldable is supposed to be. Because when you do want to multitask, game, or watch videos, then you can just fold it open. And when you do fold it open, you have a massive 7.92 inch OLED display, which is also 120 Hertz, and it also has pen support. And you have a total of five cameras. So you've got a 16 megapixel selfie camera here on the main display. There's another 16 megapixel selfie camera on the cover display. So for your general quick selfies or video calls, these are the ones you'll be using. However, when we look at the back, we have a flagship triple rear facing camera setup with a 50 megapixel primary camera, a 50 megapixel ultra wide camera, as well as a 20 megapixel telephoto camera. We have now entered the age of super slim foldable phones. Until today, we had the Huawei Mate X3 topping the thinnest foldable phone charts, followed by last year's Xiaomi Mix Fold 2, with the more recent Google Pixel Fold coming third. Well, guess what? We now have a new champion. Meet the Honor Magic V2, which is not only less than one centimeter thick when folded, but it's also lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the Galaxy S23 Ultra. 
for a foldable phone. That is rather impressive. Ahead of today's launch event, I got to preview the Magic V2 at Honor's headquarters in Shenzhen. And as someone who's been using a Xiaomi Mix Fold 2 for 10 months, I was very surprised by how thin and light this new phone was. It's almost as if it was like an ordinary smartphone when folded. Likewise, the hinge was surprisingly sturdy, given how slim the device was. On paper, the Magic V2 is only 9.9mm thick when folded. Yes, that's less than 1cm. Not bad, right? Then when you open it, the device is only 4.7mm thick. I mean, the Huawei Mate X3 was 5.3mm thick, and I thought that had already hit the limit before they had to shave into the USB port. As for weight, the Magic V2 measures just 231 grams, beating its closest competitors by a few grams. Sure, that's still heavier than most other standard candy bar phones, but this is already lighter than some of the premium flagships, which is a big milestone for the foldable phone category. Thanks to silicon carbon battery tech, you get a total capacity of 5,000 milliamp hours, which is a new record amongst foldable phones. As a bonus, you get 66 watt fast charging here, but there's no wireless charging, likely because of the aggressive thickness target. The rest of the phone is very much on par with the other recent foldables. It runs on Android 13, you get a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, 16GB of RAM, up to 1TB of storage, NFC, 3 microphones, infrared remote and more. Both screens support stylus input, but you will have to buy an active pen separately, unless you get the Ultimate Edition from China. I am a big fan of foldables. I've been using a foldable as my primary device for over three years now, and I love it even though there are certainly some downsides. And really what Honor have done here is try to eliminate as many of those as possible. Essentially, it is a fairly standard looking device, both front and back. But when you open it up, you have the massive internal display. And because it is so thin, and because it is incredibly light, it really does feel like when you have it closed up, you're just using a standard size smartphone. It is using the latest version of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform, which is quite powerful. So I'm gonna put this side by side with the Z Fold as well as an iPhone. Look how much thinner it is than something like the Z Fold. And also if I flip them over, look at how much wider the display is. While I do typically like a slightly more narrow device, this is too narrow. I mean, obviously everyone is different and if you like something that's like this, but dude, just having both these phones in my hand, not only just the width of this feels nice, but like this is significantly lighter. It feels incredibly easy to hold. Like, I mean, obviously this is a very large outer display, but like I can balance it with a couple of fingers quite easily. So let me fold it up and let's get some weights on this. Now Honor were claiming that this is going to be roughly as sort of thin as well as roughly the weight of like a traditional flagship device. So let's start out by putting the Magic V2 on the scale and we're gonna get 236 grams. So for context, the Z Fold is 256, so substantially lighter. How about we try the iPhone 14 Pro Max? 250, so this is lighter than an iPhone. Mind you, this is the big boy iPhone, but still, I mean, it makes a significant difference, especially when you open it up. Like the, the weight is distributed across in a really nice sort of way, so it's nicely balanced which is not necessarily a huge surprise, but you've got a fairly substantial camera here, and yet it doesn't feel like it's kind of like rotated or tilting. I gotta say, that's actually might be one of the smallest creases I've ever seen. If you get it in the light just right, you can see it. But I mean, again, especially comparing to like what Samsung do, it is really, really minimal. And that's impressive because this hinge is very simple. So from my understanding, the hinge is only a handful of pieces, um, but with that, it still will stay. So if I wanna set it up like this, right? Yeah, so it needs to be about, yeah, about 90 degrees or so, and it'll stay in some of the smaller spots. When you put the Honor side by side with the Z Fold, one of the things that does stand out is the battery specs. So the Honor has a larger battery. So this is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery as opposed to 4,400 on the Z Fold 5, but it goes farther than that. The Z Fold only charges at 25 watts, whereas the Honor charges at 66 watts. A big reason for that is that the Honor has a silicon carbon battery. That's a newer technology which essentially is more energy dense, meaning that even though the Honor is thinner and lighter and has a larger capacity battery, it is physically smaller and charges faster. Now, one of the benefits of this device is the fact that it's got pretty much flagship level hardware in the camera. So there are five cameras in total. So on the inner display, we have a selfie camera. We also have that exact same camera on the outer display. And then we have three cameras around back, wide, ultra wide, and telephoto. 
So by default, you can use it just like a standard smartphone. However, where it really shines is when you open up the device. So now you have a much larger window to capture your images. And on top of that, you can turn on the actual cover screen. So if I want to switch over to video mode and hit record, I now have a very large preview to see myself on the display. So we can make sure I'm framing myself up. I don't have too much headroom or not enough headroom. It's really quite nice for this to be able to easily use it for something like vlogging or what have you. Now, the only thing I will say is that in this current version of the software, which I will say again, is not final. I don't have a lot of controls on this outer display. So for a lot of that, I actually do need to come back around and control it from this side. So if I want to go like to the ultra wide, I would need to pick it up and then use the ultra wide here. So don't totally judge the image quality based on this early software. But the ability for me to have a device, which is this then and this light for something like vlogging, is nice, especially because this cover display is absolutely massive to get my framing just right. Like, I mean, this looks nice. Now, if you're not just going to vlog with the device, it does, of course, function essentially as a little tripod. So what's nice is, is when I have it in flex mode here, I have all of my like, gallery and stuff on the bottom, my controls. And on top of that, I have a nice little preview here. So I can adjust the camera just right. And if I want to flip over to photo mode, I can take a photo of Ken on the telephoto. Look at that. Boom. It's also nice too, because I can immediately see down here a full screen shot of Ken or as I'm taking a bunch of photos, so say if I take a burst or whatever, boom, 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 and it shows up right down here. It's a really clever implementation of having all of this additional sort of hardware space when it comes to the screen real estate that you've got. So I have a lot of thoughts about this device, but to sum it up, this hardware is absolutely terrific. I like the outer display and the aspect ratio. I like the inner display. I like the performance. The cameras are decent. And especially considering that this is a larger format device that is legitimately thinner and lighter than some of the big boy flagships out there is incredibly impressive. The amount of engineering that went into things like the hinge with this made of titanium and, and you think about the batteries that they've entirely designed a new battery to actually fit in here to still have good capacity. There's a lot of stuff that they've done well here. Now, I will say that as of right now, this device is only available in the Chinese market. So they have not announced a global launch. And to me, I think that they really should. Like, I very much hope that there is a global version of this phone because this hardware is terrific. Now, software wise, it is very difficult for me to evaluate because again, this is not remotely final software. So if they had significant improvements on that front, if they really finished the software, because again, it's not final, it's very, very much prototype, then I legitimately would probably switch to this. Like if the software is improved enough, like this hardware is the first time that I've been legitimately tempted to move away from the Z Flip when it comes to that form factor. I love how small that device is, but considering that this is quite thin, quite light, quite easy to carry in your pocket, unlike all these other giant foldable devices. If they nail the software, then this thing is an absolute home run. So again, thank you very much to Honor for sponsoring this video. I know you guys are watching this thing, so please get the software in a good sort of spot and give me a global launch. Like, I think that's all you need to do because, man, this might be the best engineered hardware of any smartphone I've ever seen.